I got my MTV out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! Yes! What's next? What's next? I gotta get out. What's next? Give me something else. What can't you do? I can do it. I can do anything. Law 2 is all about people being grandiose. And what does that mean? People just being full of themselves, honey. <laughs> people are full of themselves. And we know that. Thanks to social media and many other media outlets. <laughs> hey, friend. Welcome to my channel, Korean Allude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, with this video, we are going to read them pretty quickly because Law 2 is pretty lengthy. He really took his time on it and i really love it but let's read the notes real quick from law two and get into the discussion so law two people are grandiose grandiosity is our natural tendency to inflate our self-image and assume that we're more skilled than we actually are it increases as we age the more we experience successes however small the more people confirm our grandiose self-opinion there are two types of grandiosity there's number one fantastical this grandiosity is divorced from reality. We think that everything that goes right is due to our superior skills. And anytime something goes wrong, it's someone else's fault. We focus more on our dreams and wishes than on actually getting anything done. Fantastically grandiose people see themselves as God. Number two is practical. This grandiosity acknowledges that our successes comes from our work and our skills. Quick intermission, think about it. There's a lot of people and we all can be guilty of this in some point because naturally we are like this. And in part one, you talk about how we all have a little bit of narcissism in ourselves if we're just being honest, okay? But when things go wrong, we are not, unless you have imposter syndrome or you just naturally just have a negative self view of yourself, you think you can't do nothing, right? Which some, a lot of people do suffer from, but Mm, it's not as many people as you know think but a lot of us when we make a mistake we tend to blame it on things rather than ourselves as adults right if you especially if you have a little healthy image with yourself sometimes you're going to kind of cast the blame on other stuff oh but when others when others make a mistake we tend to just blame it on them like how could you do this da, 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 da. we don't give them the same grace that we give ourselves so grandiosity is part of that it's very toxic it really is on a more toxic level on a more extreme level Level, a lot of people that think they're God's gift to earth, they tend to feel like they're gods, right? Like there's that video of PDD, like, oh, I could do nothing wrong. I could book that for like the, the, the weekend of the 14th when the soundtrack comes out. If so, bump somebody. I, all right, thanks. All right, love you, man. Bye. I got my MTV out. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Yes! What's next? What's next? I gotta get it. I'm not gonna stay fucking down. What's next? Give me something else. What can't you do? I can do it. I can do anything. And of course, Kanye even called himself God. Jesus, you know? Moving forward, study the law, the development of modern grandiosity. Grandiosity develops in early childhood as we realize that we were separate beings from our mothers. We also realize that we were dependent and powerless. In response to this realization, we fantasize about being great and powerful. For example, by imagining we have superhero powers like flying or seeing through walls. As we grew up, most of us experienced a second realization that we're small and powerless in other ways besides depending on our parents. We have limited skills. We're one of the billions of people on the planet, and there's a lot we can't control. These realizations also make us fantasize about having power and feel grandiose. Most people alternate between these two states, feeling small and feeling grand. However, children who don't experience the second realization, for example, their parents spoil them so they never have to come to terms with the fact that they're powerless spend more time thinking about power and this makes them more susceptible to grandiosity when you're young your baby most babies feel like everything revolves around them they're attached to mommy they can do anything i used to think that my parents were superheroes basically they could do anything and then as you grow up and you realize hey maybe for some people you realize oh we're poor dad doesn't own all the money in the world He's not the strongest person in the world just because he could lift the couch and I couldn't and I'm so small and I'm like, he's so big, he's so powerful. Yeah, and I'm kind of limited too. I, I, I'm, I'm not this great big person. <laughs> you start to humble yourself. But 
on the contrast of that is imagine if you were spoiled and you did not get to experience that your parents still made you believe you could do anything could be anything not saying that there's necessarily anything wrong with that but there is something wrong with that <laughs> we talked about this in many other videos that it's very healthy to you know be real with your kids. I'm not saying to destroy their confidence completely or anything like that, but be real with them. You don't have to give them, uh, spoil them too much or, you know, you, that's why most rich kids tend to have this high sense of self to the point of narcissism. It's healthy to just be real with your children and not necessarily spoil them to where they just feel like they're God's, which they are God's gift to man. We all are God's gift to man, but they have to understand that we're limited to okay that's more healthy than making them feel like literally there's no limits there's nothing and i know that sounds so negative like no i'm not gonna do that with my child i'm not gonna but take a look at people that were raised with parents it's like no i'm not gonna do that those kids tend to grow up like this Okay. Expression of grandiosity. In older times, people met their needs for grandiosity with religion, gods, and spirits allowed us to be part of something bigger and grander than ourselves, or by following a leader with a strong cause. If a leader did something great, their followers shared in the success. Now that fewer people believe in something and there are fewer great leaders, we have to express our grandiosity in some other way. Many of us turn to worshiping ourselves, dun, 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 most commonly by trying to get social status through doing something prestigious or helping people. This works to some extent for talented people. They will have success and get the admiration they crave, but they'll eventually get involved with projects that are beyond their abilities. There's a lot of cult leaders throughout our time. They get a lot of people like this. You know, people want to belong somewhere they want to feel like they're part of something bigger and a lot of great cult leaders know that people need something to worship they do we were created to worship and if you're not worshiping god you're worshiping something i guarantee you that i guarantee even if it's self somebody like well i'm atheist no i don't a lot of atheists worship themselves they can't even see it like I, i'm not even like their ideology i'm so much smarter than everybody who believes in something because their identity is so deeply rooted and not believing in anything, if that makes sense. And don't come for me. Don't beat me up. I'm not coming for atheists. I'm not saying that. Well, I, I know quite a few that I'm cool. Like, yeah, we have the conversations. I'm like, oh, you really believe in yourself. <laughs> it's not sharing anything. Please, please be chill in the comments. Yeah, no, I'm not on those vibes. But we were, in a sense, created to worship. And when we don't have nothing we're worshiping or something we believe in, we tend to worship ourselves. And I love that he talked about that because most people worship themselves, their beauty. There's this thing Alicia Keys posted that went viral the other day. Everybody was sharing it where she says, I'm going to pour into myself, adore myself, love myself. Most of the stuff she was saying was cool, right? But in the stand of mind, just to throw my little Christian two, two cents in there, I would say that you say, I'm going to let God pour into me. You know, I'm going to love myself, yes, but also have humility also and under and love others. Throw that in there too. I'm going to love myself as I love others also. And I'm going to treat myself with kindness and treat others with kindness. Like I feel like more and more now in society, we're gearing towards more self, 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 self. And yes, self-love. I promote that. But it's creating selfishness and it's creating this grandiosity where people are really like, there's people that literally spend all day in the mirror, just mirror check, you know, like they're really obsessed with themselves, really literally obsessed with themselves and they live for themselves. And it can be very dangerous, especially if you are beautiful, if you do have a nice body, if you do, you know, you have your closet to look at. It can get pretty tricky, but we have to remind ourselves and he's really good with this and this chapter specifically Humble yourself, bring yourself not down. You still can be confident, be excellent, love yourself, have self-love. Like, I love myself. I really, really do. But I also prioritize loving others. I pour into myself, but I make sure God is pouring into me first. Well, actually, yes. And whatever I'm pouring into myself is ordained from God, a greater source than me. And I'm making sure that as I adore myself, I adore the Lord first and I'm grateful for whatever beauty I have or don't have, like I am grateful first that the Lord made me this way. He gave me beauty. Sometimes people will even try to compliment you. Oh, why are you so beautiful? You're so beautiful. How'd you get this beautiful? The Lord made me, you know, but a lot of people 
will look for reasons to worship themselves and kind of, you know, yeah, I get what I'm saying without saying too much. But back to this is additionally, people try to cope with their need for grandiosity by doing the following, which is one compensating with drugs, a superior attitude, alcohol, and so on. Two, faking humility. Some people try to hide their grandiosity by being visibly humble. For example, they might talk about how they don't want status. However, this is still grandiosity because it gets them attention. Let's pause on that real quick, which is why I say in a narcissistic video, um, and part one and two, where he was saying everyone's narcissist at, to some degree. There was a lot of people in the comments that didn't really agree. They was like, oh, I don't agree, da, da, da. And I was like, let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> On this channel, I always say it's about leveling up, being honest with ourselves first. Like I said, I would be lying to say, like even Robert Greene stated, he wouldn't have wrote his book if he felt, if he didn't feel he had something to offer to the world. There is a form of narcissism attached to that. I wouldn't even be sitting here doing this video if I didn't feel like people would watch it and I have something to offer, whatever, you know, there is a form of that but attached to it. There's healthy narcissism. One thing I don't like is when people lie to themselves. That's the worst person you can lie to. I always say that. Lie to others. The worst person you can lie to is, of course, God, but yourself. That's just crazy. How are you going to grow if you keep feeding yourself a lie, right? And some people really hide behind. Their, that's why I wanted to do the video, Toxic Humility. I got you. I'm going to do a video on toxic humility. But I want to do a video on toxic humility coming up because a lot of people really like to pretend they're so humble. They don't care, whatever. Listen, if it were not for God, I wouldn't be humble. I wouldn't be humble. There's a lot I could be cocky about or brag about. And I literally have to actively pray for humility and actively be humble. I would be lying to stand in front of here and act like, hey, grandiosity is just not in my DNA. I was born so humble. That is a lie. There's people that talk like that and then they criticize others' arrogance without knowing that their form of humility is arrogant. You're using bragging about humility is arrogant. <laughs> Holding your humility over other people's heads is arrogant because it's something I quote unquote have that you don't have. I don't want status. I don't care for designer. I don't care for this. I don't care for that. Like it's like a bragging right. And you look down at others who do care for it in a sense, which is a superior attitude. Do you feel so? Even then you have this superior, which is compensating and grandiosity. So we all suffer with some form of grandiosity. So even your humility, especially when you brag about it, because humility is true humility, is very quiet. You're not going to brag about it, you know, especially if it's not in a teachable moment. If it's a teachable thing, write a, like you're writing a book like Robert Greene or you're doing a video like myself, then you can use examples. And I love how he gives her life examples in his books, like Superior. I don't give the examples in the videos. You guys have to listen, at least on Audible. Superior. Superior. Ugh. Anyways, there is some form of arrogance that comes in that, if you get what I'm saying. So next is playing the victim. These people get themselves into situations where they're suffering. And the more they suffer, the more superior they feel. They've suffered so much already, they shouldn't have to help anyone. Worshiping a leader with a cause. Followers can feel superior to people who don't believe in the cause. Idealizing people they love, okay? The suffering part is so deep because we all know people that go through it, that's been through it, and they use their suffering to badger other people. It's like, I've been through so much. And I always say, when I say I'm drained by those people, people think like I'm mean by it, right? But if you've ever talked to someone that used their suffering as a badge of honor and they look for more opportunities to suffer, to have the superior. I, I, it's so weird how people can use suffering as a form of superior superiority, but they do. Their traumas, they literally use their traumas in every circumstance to talk about it. This is why I'm this. And like, you would never understand. You didn't go through to the extent of even lying. And it's a form of attention seeking, feeling like because I went through something somebody else didn't go through, that it makes me special in some way. I know that sounds crazy, but there are people that do that. Because people who don't have an outlet for their grandiosity are often manic, alternating between being excited by their next project and being depressed when they realize they won't be able to complete it. Those are the people that jump from one job to another, one career to another, one path from another. They're excited one minute and then they realize they took on more than they could chew or they're not really as great at, the, at this as they thought or maybe 
maybe it's too much. And then you start to see they're not excited anymore and they're looking for the next big thing. Those people tend to suffer from that grandiosity. A grandiosity in modern times, while there are fewer outlets for grandiosity today than there were in the past, people have more grandiose tendencies than ever because one, we live in a time when children are more spoiled. Spoiled children are less likely to realize they aren't all powerful, which makes them more susceptible to grandiosity. And then fewer people respect authority or expertise. If people don't have a sense that others are superior to them, they think their own ideas are just as legitimate. If someone has no respect for authority, no one has authority above them, they're dangerous. Those are the type of people that become cult leaders and they're very chaotic. They can even turn into crim criminals in a sense because who do you respect? Who do you respect? You don't respect authority, police, your elders, women, your children, whatever. Like there's no hierarchy for these people. And these are very dangerous people today. Technology has made it easy for anyone to quickly access information. This makes some people think that it doesn't take time and study to be an expert. They can get to the same level via the internet. People also tend to believe their skills are more transferable. For example, they think if they're good at business, they might also be good at theme park design. That's why you get a lot of celebrities that will just be an actor or be on reality TV, then they go open a restaurant, then they go open a theme park, then they go become a fashion designer, then they have a perfume line, then they have a hair care line, then they have, you know, nails, and then they have this. But it's like, hey, let me monopolize everything. And somewhere, one or more, if you're not focused on something, and I say who did it really well is Rihanna. If I still use Fenty products, like, my whole face okay and she focused on that one lane it was music and then makeup 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 focused on it and as she branched out into the skincare it all kind of aligned and you could tell like it was a steady slow build but there's a lot of celebrities that have an alcohol brand a hair brand of uh, outfits and then they'll have books and then they'll have perfume and then they'll have this and it's like i can do it all i can do it all a jack of all trades is a master of none that's one of my favorite quotes and i always knew this and i always tell people until i master Mastered one thing, I'm not just going to jump to the other thing. I have to master this and let it be perfect first. It has to run smoothly because to become a real expert, it takes time. It takes research. It takes studying your craft. It takes being around the right people. You can't just be jumping from one thing to another. Like it just does not work. But people that suffer with grandiosity, which is why they seem to be jumping from one job to another, getting excited with this and then losing excitement once it starts to fail or it becomes too much. And their business ventures, even when they have money, because a lot of billionaires, their businesses fail. <laughs> they have to sell it. Another company has to buy it out and do it the right way. They'll start, but the execution, execution is terrible because they just didn't study the craft long enough. Now, social media makes it possible to create an idealized image of ourselves and believe that many people are interested in us. There's no longer any survival association with grandiosity. Fantastical grandiosity would have gotten our ancestors killed. People who couldn't realistically assess their skills would try things that would kill them. But the modern world isn't dangerous in the same way. Everyone feels more open to which is a great thing, but it's also, it creates this. How to manage toxic types of grandiose. Everyone falls somewhere on the scale of grandiosity. And you can figure out if people have lower or higher grandiosity by studying the following behaviors. And let's go through this one pretty quickly. Their response to criticism. People with high grandiosity can't take criticism and will get angry and hysterical or try to make the criticizer feel guilty. Next is consistency. Most powerful people let themselves relax when they're in private. Grandiose people, however, believe that their powerful self is their real self. So they act the same in all situations mm. that is crazy that is crazy they cannot relax if someone's always tense in every situation mm. next is credit taking grandiose people take credit for everything even if it's not very related to their work and in sensitive remarks grandiose people assume everyone will agree with them and give them the benefit of the doubt so they often do think before they speak mm. Low empathy. Grandiose people see other people as tools and don't listen to them. And nonverbal cues. Grandiose people gesture dramatically, talk loudly and quickly, and take up space with their bodies. When you encounter people with low everyday grandiosity, indulge them. That's what he says. Grandiosity is normal. I told you guys that. When you come across people with high grandiosity, though, it's a matter of having high and low grandiosity, but it is normal. Avoid getting close to them. In personal relationships, they'll demand attention, but won't reciprocate it. Mm. 
in professional situations, they can accurately assess their own skills and abilities and end up with responsibilities they can't complete. Be skeptical of what highly grandiose people say and judge their ideas and behavior itself, not what they say about it. Don't try to expose their grandiosity. They'll just get angry. And as far as grandiose leaders, let's get through this one real quick because I don't want to do another part for this. It says grandiose leaders use six theatrical devices to create this larger than life image by creating the impression that they're one, fated to succeed. They'll tell stories about their childhood and wish they uniquely talent, they're, they're uniquely talented in some ways as if they've been given gifts at birth. Sometimes these stories are made up. Sometimes they're interpretations of reality. They also tell stories about impressive past successes that they achieved despite considerable opposition. Two, just like the average person, grandiose leaders try to be representatives of the average person to connect with the largest audience. They visibly demonstrate that they have the same interests and tastes as the general public, even if they come from a different class. Sometimes they even criticize the elite class. For example, Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi came from a powerful family, studied in Europe, and hadn't spent much time in the poorer parts of India. However, she created the impression she was an average person by speaking colloquially, wearing her sari in the local fashion, eating with her fingers, and calling herself Mother Indira. Think of Kamala Harris. <laughs> no offense to you, sir, but the hot sauce in my bag and cool rap to hip hop and Tupac is her favorite modern rapper who's been dead for how long? You know, like think of stuff like that. They play out like that too. To avoid falling prey to this tactic, look for contradictions between a leader's real persona and background and the one they present. Three, a savior. When there's a crisis, grandiose people can often gain power because their high self-confidence is reassuring. They make large, simple, vague promises that are inspiring, but also impossible to hold them accountable for. Think of every political leader that promised to remove student loans make all these promises when they want to be president. They know it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. There's probably never going to be a president that's going to eliminate your student debt. It's just not gonna happen, but y'all fall for it every election. Savers also find scapegoats who they can turn the public against to unify the group. They also unify the group with slogans, colors, music, and so on. The leaders tend to create cult-like organizations. All you can do about this tactic is to remain analytical. You'll never be able to convince believers that their leaders has any negative qualities. This is why with politics, I'm very careful with it. Because does this not sound like politicians? Politicians are the biggest cult leaders. That's why they have Democratic parties, Republican parties, conservatives, independents, and all of those. And even globally, these political parties would fight to the death with other people, get really heated when they all work together. And these politicians will use a scapegoat. They do that. It's just... Politics is what is called politics. In Haiti, you call a person a politician when they can play both sides very easily. They can be in this group and be away and then go in that group and then get everybody together. You call them a politician as like a compliment, right? Politicians do this in essence to us. They know how to divide and they know how to unify and blame one person for all the world's problems. Like, look at it this way. If they know we're going to create a problem, we need this problem for the bigger picture, whatever they're trying to control, what they're trying to manage to control the masses and to control the masses. I know it sounds nefarious, but it, don't just look at it in a nefarious stand view. Look at it as a politician, right? We need to control this situation before it get out of control. Maybe policies with this other country. If we let this other country get too much power, this will bring our power down, our will power, our dollar, this, that, and the third. But we need to create this distraction or this or that, whatever. You do this as a Democrat, Promise this, promise we're going to do this, and then boom, when we can't do it, blame it on the Republicans. Same with Republicans. Promise you're going to do this, and when we can't do it, blame it on the Democrats. But it's not that they can't do it. It's just they know. <laughs> and the bigger picture was never going to happen. So it's easier to create political parties and just cast the blame on the other person so that in the end, you really think that there was some form of choice or whatever. Maybe I'm going too deep for that. I'm just going to leave it at that. But this is what cult leaders do also. Create the problem, but also create a scapegoat or find a scapegoat. And then it distracts the people long enough to keep fighting and not see the bigger picture. And what he says is, remain analytical. Remain analytical. You'll never be able to convince believers that their leaders has any negative qualities. Never. Someone could be watching this like, girl, please. You can't but you remain analytical. You see through it. You understand. People can't manipulate you. And this is what this channel is all about. Four is a rule breaker. 
Everyone secretly wants to dispense with rules and get power in their own way. So when a leader does this, their followers live vicariously through them. Another version of this technique is to prioritize their hunches and intuition rather than science or expert opinions. They like to think they have a magical connection to how the world works. To fight this tactic, whenever you hear someone talk about their rule-breaking abilities, realize that they don't have any special powers. Five is a warrantor of success. This technique involves grandiose leaders spinning the paths so that they can say they never failed. Anytime something went wrong, they blame it on something else. Additionally, they tend to believe that their skills are transferable and they'll succeed at anything. They try even if they don't have the expertise. Six is invincible. Grandiose leaders by nature take risk. They have to. To hold attention and much of the time they manage to make things turn out all right they also like the feeling of risk they actually are somewhat invulnerable up until the point where they overreach that's part is to control your own nature learn practical grandiosity now i've told you guys he always gives you a comeback and since we all like this how can we prevent ourselves from becoming the cult leaders politicians how can we control our own grandiosity first is it's hard to recognize grandiosity in yourself because when you're experiencing it you're not seeing reality it's also hard to learn from your mistakes because this would require you to admit that you're not as great as you thought you were if you're suffering from grandiosity you might take on projects that are too advanced you might jump from project to project because your current work isn't confirming your grandiosity you might be passive because you feel you deserve things so instead of working towards them you wait for other people to give them to you there are people that literally will not do nothing with their life because they're waiting literally for a handout or some people would even be like god you know i'm lazy you know this so why don't you just bring it to me why don't you just like they'll even be mad at god for not just letting something happen for them when it's like sis that's not how it works <laughs> get up and go do what you got to do to make sure you have what you need right you really feel entitled to the success and so you're waiting for it to happen and you don't know that for it to happen you have to get up and do something Next is strategy one, acknowledge that you have grandiose tendencies first and that your self-opinion may not be objectively accurate. Remember that you're not inherently better than anyone. Two, strategy, choose one goal and stick to it. Fantastical grandiosity makes you inclined to jump from project to project as you imagine the attention you could get. Ideally, you'll get so absorbed in this one project that you think about all the time instead of fantasizing about the glory you could get from other projects. This project should also play to your skills. Strategy three, balance imagination and analysis. When you first start projects, be open to all ideas. Once you have a better sense of the idea, seek out feedback. Ask others to point out potential flaws and analyze what you did wrong. The balance is important. Too much imagination and you've fallen victim to unrealistic grandiosity. Too much analysis and your work will be conventional. Strategy four is choose appropriately difficult challenges. Grandiosity blinds you to difficulty. You tend to see projects as not very hard and people as likely to do what you want. You focus on what you'll get if you succeed, not how to actually get there. So you can't see the scale of the task. Strategy five is pay attention to your body signals. When you do things that are beyond your limits, you'll get headaches and feel tired, grouchy, and nervous. If you do things that you have a talent for, on the other hand, you have more energy and learn faster, and doing the task feels easy. A strategy was his strategy six, scrutinize your success. When something goes right, recognize that luck and help were involved. No success is wholly our own. We always had help from teachers, our contributors, or we had good timing. Additionally, don't let past successes influence your next project. Every time you start something new, imagine it's the first thing you've ever done and you have no track record. Grandiose tendencies escape occasionally. Every once in a while, consider taking on projects that are beyond your current limits. Brainstorm new skills you want to learn or demonstrate your self-confidence. This is the only way you really get to grow. This book is not just teaching you about human nature. It's in a sense teaching you about yourself. Because I know a lot of people read these books and even for the Lots of Power, The Art of Seduction, which I will be doing The Art of Seduction, I'm happy for, is really teaching you about yourself first, not just other people, you know, because in a lot of this, he shows you yourself and it gives you tips on how to even prevent going off into the deep end, being aware of your dark side, your darker tendencies to 
not only hold yourself in check, but to be able to really see it in others and protect yourself. But comment below your thoughts. I'm really curious. What do you think about this? And make sure you subscribe. Every week we will do a book club video and you don't want to miss that. If you like this series and you watch until the end, leave a red or a black heart in the comments for me and definitely thumbs up and share with a friend and let's grow our community. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Mwah.